that one of the ways you can, you can terrorize and intimidate a population of people is to first pass a battery of laws that make their routine conduct illegal, then that becomes one of the most powerful mechanisms for suppressing that group of people. And that's what happened in the South, was that, that all these states passed these laws that made it almost impossible for a black man not to be in violation of some ridiculous statute at almost any given time, like walking beside a railroad, or speaking loudly around a white woman, or, or not being able to prove you had a job. And it was a criminal offense to be a vagrant in the South, and a very serious criminal offense. And it was an even more serious criminal offense in all Southern states uh, to seek employment, uh, if you were a farm worker specifically, to seek employment without permission from whoever you worked for at the time. And so if you were working for one white landowner and you went and started talking to another white landowner about working for him, you were committing a crime. You weren't just kind of getting in a civil dispute with the first guy, you were committing a crime for which you might end up uh, in, forced, uh, in hard labor for three or four years for doing that. Um, and, uh, and so this system of laws was created that criminalized black life um, and people made a huge amount of money off of all of this, which was another reason to keep good records, uh, because you know you wanted to keep up with what you were owed for all. There was a whole accounting system necessary to keep up with. So much money was moving around. By the beginning of the 20th century, the the leasing out of prisoners was the single largest source of revenue for the state of Alabama. It made more money off this than it did off taxes or you know any other form of money that came into the state of Alabama. And, um, and so this required the creating of a huge amount of paperwork. Um, but then by the time I came along, these historians had done some work, but they had tended to focus on the state court systems. I know this sounds sort of arcane, but if you can follow me, it's actually interesting. But you know, state courts are where felonies are, are worked out. And county courts and city courts are where, uh, where misdemeanors are handled. And uh, in a state court where felonies are, are adjudicated, usually, or at least there's a higher probability that some crime actually occurred, you know, like in the case of murder. You know, there's usually a dead body on the floor, you know, so there, something happened. Um, uh, and so when people were charged with murder, there's at least some higher probability that there was a crime. Um, and, but the records of the state courts were relatively well maintained, relatively well organized, and you could go down to Jackson, Mississippi, and go to the state archives and find a pretty good record of all these things over a pretty long period of time. But what, what dawned on me was that there were probably 10 times as many people who were sent into hard labor through the county courts, through this whole other system of courts, which was much sloppier, dealt with misdemeanors, uh, it involved these things like vagrancy and breaking contract with your, with your employer in which thousands and thousands and thousands of people were charged with those things and sent into labor. But that was all down at this much sloppier level of the court system. And no historians had ever really examined that because it was hard, because all the records were scattered all over the place and you didn't know where they existed and where they didn't exist. And so what really made this book from a research point of view was that I began going from county to county, courthouse to courthouse, and I would show up at these courthouses looking for these records from a century ago or 75 years ago. And almost always, I would first be told that nothing existed, the courthouse had burned down 50 years ago, everything burned up with it. And people believed that that was true because that's what the county clerk's mother had told her when she was the county clerk. Um, and, uh, and so I developed some techniques for getting around that because as an old police reporter, from my first days as a newspaper reporter, I knew that you can't, government agencies can't generate that much paper and then get rid of it all because it's too hard. You know, when you generate hundreds of thousands of pieces of paper, it is a lot of work to get rid of that unless the courthouse does burn down, you know. Uh, and so I knew there had to be big, big boxes, huge amounts of stuff out there somewhere, and ultimately there was. And I found in many, many places. I just would go, and like I'd go, I'd go to the courthouse, I'd go to the clerk's office, and I'd say, hey, I'm looking for these really old county, you know, uh, criminal records. And one thing that helped me, back to your question really, was that, that um, uh, this stuff was all just outside living memory. So like the, the clerk I'd be talking to, if it had been 10 years earlier, when her mother was the clerk, she might have had some awareness that there's some stuff in those records that 
is kind of embarrassing. Um, but she's gone now, and the, the, the 35 or 40 year old clerk who's there has no idea you know, what any of this might add up to because nobody really remembered it anymore. And, um, and so, she, but she would say, well, no, it's all gone, it all burned down, we don't have anything earlier than 1969 here. And I would say, well, but this building is 100 years old, how, how did it burn down? And, and that would break the script, and she would have to stop and think and, and say, well, I guess there are some things older than that, but I don't know anything about what you're talking about. And then, and this sounds like I'm making this up, but it's not, it's absolutely a fact. I would say, but don't you remember? And then that would, she would immediately think that, okay, I'm now claiming I'm from the town. But I would say, I would say don't you remember several years ago uh, when they were cleaning out the probate clerk's office? I think it was a probate clerk's office. Uh, don't you remember? And the sheriff came over with some prisoners and they loaded up all these big leather bound volumes, these big huge books. Don't you remember? They stunk and it was so dusty and they took all of that stuff away. Don't you remember when that happened? And about half the time they would say, I don't have any idea what you're talking about, who are you? you know? um, but the other half of the time they would say, oh yeah, I do remember that. Um,